Hi, this is Peter Strymer, priest associate at Epiphany Parish, and I've been asked to send along some sermons during the season of Lent from here in Florida, where my wife and I spend the winter. Lent is a wonderful season of contemplation. It began last Wednesday with a service we call Ash Wednesday, and it goes all the way until Easter time and gives us a long period to reflect and contemplate about our lives. And not just about our lives, but the lives of all the people in the world, and not just the people who are alive today, but thinking about all those who have gone before us. It's particularly a good time to learn about the past of our faith, and especially to learn about the past that we inherited from the Hebrew scriptures in what we call the Old Testament. Each week our church assigns a set of readings that are used by the church and during the season of Lent, we hear stories of some of the great figures from the Old Testament. And so what I'm going to do with these five sermons that I'll be sending along to you is to take each of those figures that we learn about each week and talk about them a little bit. <clears throat> and the person we'll talk about today is the story of Noah. And you probably remember that Noah was the person who, along with his wife and family, built a big, beautiful boat called the Ark. Now, this story has been told for thousands of years as an example to tell us about our relationship with God. And it's a really powerful story. It turns out that Noah was alive at a time when human beings were being so evil and so bad that there was a chance that everything on earth was going to die. And so God challenged Noah to build a boat big enough to take two of each creature there is on the earth, all the way from bugs to whales. And Noah, being a great man of faith, listened to God and then began his task. And right there in his backyard, he built the world's biggest boat. And his neighbors would come along and make fun of him, because why was he building a boat in the middle of dry land? because there wasn't an ocean or a lake or a sea anywhere nearby. <clears throat> but Noah kept on faithfully building that boat. And when the time came, he collected two of every animal, loaded them on that boat. Now that must have been quite a sight. In the middle of dry land, a huge, huge ship on which there were creatures from all over the world. Well, the people around Noah began to understand why he built that ark, because the rains came for 40 days and 40 nights and flooded every part of the earth, even filling up over the tops of the mountains so that the whole world was water for those 40 days. And then finally, the waters receded. That big boat, the ark, came to rest on a mountaintop and Noah opened the doors and let out all the animals two by two. And the world got a brand new, fresh start from that very day. Not just Noah and his family, but every creature on earth. And these are the times we still live in because God promised Noah that he would never ever again destroy the earth by sending a flood like he did. Now, the story that we're given in our Bible for this week has the end of the story of Noah, and it's the story of the promise that God makes to Noah after the flood has come to an end. So God said to Noah, I am making a promise between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the love between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and that rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my promise to you to never destroy the earth again. And never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting promise that I have made. Isn't that a beautiful story? And it tells us the meaning of a rainbow. Now, we in Seattle, we get to see lots of rainbows because we have lots of rain. 
And that rainbow is a beautiful reminder that God made a promise to Noah and all the creatures of the earth after the great flood. God promised that he loves all his creatures and that he would never again destroy them with water. And this was a promise not just to Noah, but to every living thing. And so it's a promise to you and me too. We are part of God's rainbow promise. And that rainbow promise is a circle that begins with God, comes to us, and goes back to God. That means when that rainbow comes out, we're sitting on the rainbow, which is God's circle of love. So whenever you see a rainbow, think of God and God's promise to Noah and the God's promise to each and every one of us and to all creatures for all time. The rainbow, what a great reminder of how much God loves us. It's the number one sign of God's love in all creation. Well, let's offer our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your rainbow and the promises you make in every color we see in it. Help us to remember that you love us and will see us through each and every storm. Whenever we see a rainbow, we will think of you. Rainbows remind us that you will keep your promise and that reminds us that even when we're having bad days, the storm will pass and things will get better for us. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. I hope you have a wonderful Lent and I'll see you again next week when we hear the stories about Abraham and Sarah. Hi everybody, welcome back to Craft Time. I'm Naomi and today's craft is going to focus on something that actually already took place earlier this week on Wednesday, February 17th. So I don't know if you remember what day that was, but in the church year, we call it Ash Wednesday. And it's when we get ashes put on our foreheads in the shape of a cross. And this is today's craft. So it's a self-portrait, yes, that is me, with the cross of ashes on my forehead. And then I just wrote Ash Wednesday at the top. And I figured if you did get to participate in this service, whether in person or maybe you watched the video online, we also did do a children's video for you, then I'm guessing that the ashes have probably disappeared by now because it's been a few days. So this way we can remember Ash Wednesday because we'll just draw a self-portrait with a cross on our forehead because Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent, which is the season that we're in for 40 days. So this way, throughout the 40 days, we can remember where it all started. And Ash Wednesday is an important day because if you watch the videos, it's when we remember the things that maybe keep us from having a good relationship with God, whether it's that we don't spend time praying or reading our Bible stories or being nice to people in our family or our friends. And it's a time that we really try hard to get back into a better relationship with God. So all you're going to need is a piece of white paper or a colored piece of paper would work too. If you're able to pick up your lint in a bag, there is some construction paper in there and you can just pull out any color paper you want. There is white pieces of paper in here too. So if you wanna pull out that paper and then you're just gonna need some markers or you can use colored pencils or you could use crayons too, whatever you want to draw your self portrait with. And the way I did the ashes for the cross is with a crayon because I thought it looked kind of more like ashes. And in that lint in a bag, we did put in um, a little container of ashes. So if you still have some left over, you could actually just dip your finger in the ashes and mark that on your self portrait too but a black crayon would work, or if you only have a black marker, that's totally fine too. And what you're gonna do is just draw a picture of yourself. That's what a self-portrait is. So that's my version. 
And then you're going to just put a cross on the forehead to remember Ash Wednesday. And then if you want to write Ash Wednesday across the top, you can do that too. And then go ahead and put this somewhere where you're gonna see it every day during Lent so that it reminds us of this journey, of this time together, these 40 days, as we remember that Jesus was in the desert being tempted. And it's a reminder of how we can work to become closer with God and think of all the ways that would bring us closer to God, whether it's by saying we're sorry to people that maybe we've hurt or maybe spending more time reading the stories in the Bible or praying and all sorts of other ways. And if you didn't get a chance to watch the children's um, Ash Wednesday service, go ahead and go to the church website. I'll leave the website right here. And then you can find the video there and watch that. And Miss Ruthann is going to explain more about what Ash Wednesday is about. And you'll actually see me as well and Miss Karen, who some of you guys know from Sunday school. So I hope you have fun creating these self portraits and putting the cross of ashes on the forehead and then putting it up somewhere where you can see each day during Lent. I'll see you next time.